Mission Barrio Adentro, Wikipedia Article Audio Mission Barrio Adentro is a Bolivarian national social welfare program established under late Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez. The program seeks to provide comprehensive publicly funded health care, dental care, and sports training to poor and marginalized communities in Venezuela. Barrio Adentro features the construction of thousands of iconic two-story medical clinics consultorios or doctor's offices as well as staffing with resident certified medical professionals. Barrio Adentro constitutes an attempt to deliver a de facto form of universal health care, seeking to guarantee access to quality and cradle-to-grave medical attention for all Venezuelan citizens. Background Origins Barrio Adentro I Barrio Adentro II Barrio Adentro III and IV Creation of related missions Analysis Abandonment Defections Controversy Licensure Irregularities in funding Dumping of medicine and faking of reports Notes The Latin American branch of the World Health Organization and UNICEF both praised the program in its early years. According to WHO statistics, infant mortality fell from 23 to 20 in males and 19 to 17 in females per 1,000 births between 2003 and 2005. Of a planned 8,500 Barrio Adentro I centers, 2,708 had been built by May 2007, using an investment of around 126 million US dollars, with a further 3,284 under construction. As of 2006, the staff included 31,439 professionals, technical personnel, and health technicians, of which 15,356 were Cuban doctors and 1,234 Venezuelan doctors. In 2014, the government celebrated 11 years of the mission announcing that over 10,000 clinics were created. In Caracas, Mission Barrio Adentro I and two centers in 32 parishes were the subject of constant complaints about performance even after being funded BS 1.492 million by the government. Councilman Alejandro Vivas stated that instead of having positive results, what is observed is the discontent of the citizens for a performance that leaves much to be desired. As of December 2014, it was estimated that 80% of Barrio Adentro establishments were abandoned in Venezuela, with the majority of Cuban medical personnel leaving the country. By the end of 2015, the Bolivarian government reported that of all Venezuelans admitted to public health facilities that year, one in three patients died. One year later in October 2016, it was reported that hundreds of doctors were being recalled by Cuba, allegedly due to a lack of payments by Venezuela. The Barrio Adentro program was developed against a background of a public health sector crumbling under long-term financial pressure. As part of the neoliberalization program of the early 1990s under President Rafael Caldera, a Venezuela struggling with inflation and a low oil price was forced into spending cuts and privatization in a number of sectors, including health care. A 1989 decentralization law contributed to the trend. From 1993, state governors could request the transfer of public health care in their state to their control and the inability to cope with the new responsibility encouraged cuts and privatization. Cost recovery became increasingly prevalent through voluntary contributions from users. In addition to the problems with the healthcare system, over the course of the decade, 
health problems caused by poverty increased. By 1999, 67.7% of the Venezuelan population was living in poverty, from 44.4% in 1990. In 1999, following the election of Hugo Chavez, the Ministry of Health planned to develop a new national public health system, with a particular focus on health promotion, disease prevention, community participation, and the strengthening of the primary health care infrastructure. The 2000-1 annual report by Pruvia highlighted a number of positive features of the new approach, including a wider availability of health services through progressive elimination of users' fees. The Barrio Adentro program is an example of Latin American social medicine, which became prominent in the 1960s and 1970s. Amongst others in Latin America, both Salvador Allende in Chile in the early 1970s and Tabaré Vézquez in Uruguay from 2005 have implemented LASM principles. LASM's roots can be traced back to 19th century European social medicine, which was exported to Latin America in the early 20th century. LASM emphasizes a collective and holistic approach to health care, rather than merely treating the particular symptoms of one individual. Thus the importance of health promotion and disease prevention is stressed informed by the political economic and social determinants of health over a merely reactive treatment of health problems as they occur. LASM incorporates the concept of primary health care, of which the simplified health care adopted in rural Venezuela in the 1960s and 1970s was one form. More recently, in 2006, Barrio Adentro was described by the director of the PAHO as the culmination of 25 years of experience in Latin America and the rest of the world in transforming health systems through the primary health care strategy. When Hugo Chavez became president in 1999, he sought to implement LASM principles beginning with their incorporation into the new 1999 Venezuelan Constitution, in Articles 83-85 of Title III. These articles enshrine free and high-quality health care as a human right guaranteed to all Venezuelan citizens. Notably, Article 84 of Title III follows LASM principles in declaring health promotion and disease prevention a priority, it also describes the health care system as decentralized and participative and declares that the community has the right and the duty to be involved in policy decisions regarding the public health system. In addition, Article 85 mandates that the government provide adequate funding for the public health care system, while Article 84 explicitly proscribes its privatization. Initial attempts to transform the Ministry of Health to LASM principles, in the 1999-2003 period, met with little success. The Venezuelan Medical Federation was aligned with the Punto Fajo parties, and many of its members in private health care opposed the new emphasis on the public sector. At the same time that the new policies failed to make much ground within the health care system, the traditional top-down way in which the policies were developed and carried out prevented a strong connection with the concerns of the poor. The origins of a different approach for carrying out LASM lay in the Libertador municipality of Caracas, which in 2003 set up an institute for endogenous development, broadly intended to improve living conditions through the active participation of the local population. Following a series of discussions between IED and local residents, a proposal was formulated to set up a plan Barrio Adentro using small local clinics to provide free health care inside the neighborhood where previously there was none, and to involve residents in the management of the scheme. Bernal then issued a call for doctors 
but the Venezuelan Medical Federation put pressure on its members not to apply. Of the 50 Venezuelan doctors who did apply, 30 left on hearing that they would need to live in the barrios, the remaining 20 were specialists and therefore employed in specialist centers and not required to work in the primary health care centers in the barrios. Faced with a lack of willing doctors, Bernal recalled the Cuban doctors who had provided emergency aid following the 1999 mud slides, and discussion with the Cuban embassy in February 2003 ultimately led to a contingent of 58 Cuban doctors starting the program in April 2003. In the interim, three Cuban physicians spent a month visiting the barrios, examining the homes and clinic spaces offered by the community. By May 2003, another 100 Cuban doctors arrived, and were sent to other parts of Libertador and to other municipalities in and around Caracas. Besides diagnosis and treatment, including the provision of free prescription drugs, the doctors carried out a health census of the barrios, which provided a complete health survey of the Caracas barrios for the first time. Despite some obstacles, Plan Barrio Adentro became very popular with its constituents. By December 2003, Plan Barrio Adentro having seen over 9 million patient consultations and 4 million health interventions was so popular that it was attracting national attention, and President Chavez transformed it into a national program, named Mission Barrio Adentro. It became the first of a series of popular missions bypassing existing public institutions. The key aspect of these centers is that they are located within the neighborhood and in the marginalized zones of the large cities, although some facilities were located in higher income areas. Placement of Barrio Adentro health posts within those neighborhoods that had been most excluded was undertaken at the request of the neighborhood health committees and taking into consideration pre-existing health care facilities. A key part of the National Barrio Adentro scheme, as it was in the original local plan, is the participation of the local community. This takes place through health committees chosen in an assembly of citizens and typically around 10 people. By 2006, some 8,951 health committees had been registered, one for each primary care post. A total of 41,639 community health assemblies were held in the first quarter of 2006 with the participation of 1,423,815 people. The issue of participation goes beyond mere management. As one academic study put it, the observed role of positive, egalitarian clinical interactions between Cuban physicians and Venezuelan patients and other residents suggests that doctor-patient interactions model power relations between communities and institutions and affect local perceptions and participation. It concluded that developing more positive and egalitarian physician-slash-patient and professional-slash-community relationships may be one of the easiest most effective ways the medical profession can contribute to overcoming health disparities. Each primary care post covered 250 to 300 families. By 2003, primary medical care coverage was achieved for 70% of the Venezuelan population for whom primary care was previously unavailable, representing over 18 million people. By 2007, 3,717 primary care posts had been built and equipped, and a total of 8,633 posts were operational. There were also 4,800 dentists. In 1998, Venezuela had only 1,628 staffed primary care posts, and 800 dentists. Between 1998 and 2007, 
this represented an increase of 530% and 600%, respectively. In addition to the new infrastructure, there were also new outreach programs. For example, in addition to the drug module for the popular medical dispensaries, a family drug module was launched in 2005. This program reached 40 selected municipalities in 17 states, and every three months delivered drugs and vitamin supplements tailored to the family's needs. Hundreds of thousands of infants, children, and pregnant and elderly women have benefited. Over 150,000 health promoters from local communities were trained in 2004-2006 to spread messages relating to ways of improving health. After the Barrio Adentro's primary care network went nationwide in 2004, moves to expand beyond primary care soon followed. What became known as Barrio Adentro I focused on primary health care. Barrio Adentro II focused on secondary care, in three main areas, comprehensive diagnosis centers, comprehensive rehabilitation centers, and advanced technology centers. Plans were made for 600 each of the first two facilities and 35 of the latter. As of 2007, Barrio Adentro II involved 417 Comprehensive Diagnostic Centers 576 Comprehensive Rehabilitation Centers and 22 Advanced Technology Centers. Key modern technology is split between CDCs and ATCs. In 1998, there was only one MRI machine and five CT scanners in the public sector. Barrio Adentro 3 provides care for those cases which cannot be resolved at the two lower levels major illnesses, palliative and specialist care. Care is available 24 hours a day. Barrio Adentro 4 is responsible for the most complicated and specialized medical and surgical needs. These are national and referral facilities where teaching and research is carried out. On November 16, 2006, the Chavez government introduced this phase of the Barrio Adentro project, with the planned 16 hospitals to be built around the country, especially in poor areas. The Dr. Gilberto Rodriguez Ochoa Latin American Children's Cardiology Hospital, inaugurated in 2007, is the most notable example being one of the largest centers of its kind in the world, with 142 hospital beds and 33 intensive care beds. As the work of the first primary health care Barrio Adentro proceeded, censuses began to reveal the depth of the social deficits accumulated in these communities. The response was to expand into a number of new areas, creating new missions. Thus under mission alimentation, efforts are made to ensure that the vulnerable receive at least two meals a day. Mission Robinson was created to address illiteracy, which in turn led to Mission Milagro to deal with the revealed deficit of ophthalmological care for eye disease. From 1998 to 2007, the infant mortality rate fell from 21.3 to 13 per 1,000 registered births. Between 2003 and 2007, 4,659 new comprehensive level I and two health care centers were built and equipped. Services in these centers is provided free of charge. However, Jorge Diaz Polanco a sociologist of the Center for Development Studies, stated that despite an increase of investment, the maternal mortality rate increased and in 2009, the rate was 70 deaths per 100,000, the highest since the 1990s. In 2004 and 2005, Barrio Adentro provided 150 million consultations, four times as many as the conventional outpatient network, 
40% of these were home visits. In surveys conducted by the Venezuelan government's National Statistics Institute in Caracas, 97% of the respondents said that they were satisfied or very satisfied with their general medical consultations, and 98% said they had little or no difficulty gaining access to health care while 88.5% said that they had some OR considerable difficulty gaining access to health care prior to Barrio Adentro. However, in Caracas, Mission Barrio Adentro I and two centers in 32 parishes were the subject of constant complaints about performance even after being funded BS 1.492 million by the government. Councilman Alejandro Vivas stated that instead of having positive results, what is observed is the discontent of the citizens for a performance that leaves much to be desired. One academic study noted that the successes of the Barrio Adentro program in 2003 and 2004 may have crucially enhanced Chavez's 59% to 41% victory in the Venezuelan recall referendum. 2004. By 2017, it was reported by the Miami Herald that though the program had saved lives, it was also clear the program is less effective than the administration would like the world to believe, with reports of exaggerated and fraudulent data being reported by Cuban medical personnel who had previously worked under the mission. In July 2007, Douglas Leon Natera, chairman of the Venezuelan Medical Federation, reported that up to 70% of the modules of Barrio Adentro have been either abandoned or were left unfinished. In some cases the Venezuelan government accused elected opposition officials of trying to impede or close existing missions. In 2006 Chavez accused the governor of Zulia state of impeding Barrio Adentro there. According to investigative journalist Patricia Marcano, in 2010 the Venezuelan government promised to start 357 clinics but only 148 were completed. In 2012, 298 clinics were promised, while 175 were made and in 2013, 62 were promised but only 35 were constructed. In December 2014, it was estimated that 80% of Barrio Adentro establishments were abandoned with reports of some structures being filled with trash or being unintentional shelter for the homeless. The majority of Cuban medical personnel has also left Venezuela. In August 2006, the United States under George W. Bush created the Cuban Medical Professional Parole Program, specifically targeting Cuban medical personnel and encouraging them to defect when they are working in a country outside of Cuba. According to a 2007 paper published in the Lancet Medical Journal, growing numbers of Cuban doctors sent overseas to work are defecting to the USA. Cuban doctors working abroad are reported to be monitored by Minders and subject to curfew. In February 2010, seven Cuban doctors who defected to the U.S. introduced an indictment against the governments of Cuba and Venezuela and the oil company PFSA for what they considered was a conspiracy to force them to work under conditions of modern slaves as payment for the Cuban government debt. In 2014, it was reported by Miami NGO, Solidarity Without Borders, that at least 700 Cuban medical personnel had left Venezuela in the past year and that up to hundreds of Cuban personnel had asked for advice on how to escape from Venezuela weekly. Solidarity Without Borders also stated that Cuban personnel cannot refuse to work cannot express complaints and suffer with blackmail from threats against their family in Cuba. The Venezuelan Medical Federation, the largest association of medical doctors in Venezuela, lobbied vigorously against the use of Cuban doctors in Mission Barrio Adentro, 
and was in a legal dispute with the Chavez administration over the legitimacy of the Cuban doctor's licensure and practice. In 2003, they obtained a court order preventing Cuban doctors from practicing in Venezuela, on the basis that they were not properly licensed according to the Venezuelan system. A compromise was reached enabling them to continue working in Barrio Adentro. In 2014, the Controller General of the Republic found serious irregularities in the process of repair, modernization, and extension of eight national referral hospitals. In 2006, the Venezuelan government funded companies without reasons and without certain regulations. The controller said that the project was marked by weakness and improvisations and that his authorization does not imply commitment to the foundation or the MPPS. In 2017, the Miami Herald reported that groups of Cuban health care workers who had defected from the program stated that due to the daily quotas of patients, they would often feel pressured to fake paperwork and throw away medicine since regular audits of their supplies meant they needed them to match their patient count. If Cuban medical personnel did not meet their quotas, they were threatened with having their pay cut or being sent back to Cuba.